When you saw me coming up onto the stage, what went through your mind? A Haredi woman has come to speak to us. How did you know I'm a Haredi woman? According to what I wear, the way I dress. When you or other people come to Israel, visit Jerusalem, and see us Haredi people with different clothing, what does it do to you? What is your reaction? Perhaps questions occur. There is a lack of understanding and less of a feeling of closeness. That's exactly what I have come to talk about today. In this talk, I am inviting you to open a gate to the Haredi world. I am a Haredi woman, born, raised, and living in Jerusalem. I am the only sister of nine brothers, the fortunate mother of six daughters, and in my spare time, an artist. In 2002, I opened a studio called Diokan Yehudi, Jewish Portraits, where I focus on painting Haredi and Hasidic personalities with the traditional Jewish garb. I was met with curiosity and interest from the onlookers. I get questions such as, why do we choose to wear, to wear such long and heavy clothing, which was more appropriate for the cold climate of Europe? What is the point of groups wearing identical clothing? And why do we wear clothing that was in fashion centuries ago? When I was a young girl, I visited with my family a museum in Detroit. This museum exhibited the way of life in previous centuries. There were houses from the style of the past, and even people who got paid for walking around with dresses from that time. As I was walking around with my grandfather, who has a long white beard, wears a black hat, and a dark suit, we overheard one person whisper to the other, Tell me, is he for real? So the answer is yes, he is for real. And the style of clothing is from the past. But no, he does not get paid for it. So why do we wear these clothes that are old-fashioned and not in style nowadays? When I was working on my diploma in art, I decided to take up the challenge to research and explore this subject. I'll share with you a secret. Although I am more on the inside, even I wasn't aware of the many styles and meanings of the clothing. For an outsider looking at the Haredim, they all seem like they have clothes that are black and united. For an outsider, it is hard to tell the difference between the community garb. Even the penguins are having a hard time doing it. It is natural. For someone from the outside that looks at a population that is different than ours, we have a tendency to group them all into one unit. Someone that wasn't raised as a Haredi will find it hard to distinguish between the festive clothes and the everyday clothes, between the different communities and between the single to the married. I will try a bit to break up this black group and to give you a taste of the different styles and colors. There are several reasons for this unique kind of dress. I'll just touch a few of them. First of all, preserving traditional clothing helps preserving a long-time tradition that was passed from father to son. You could see all over the world that groups that wear traditional clothing find it easier to preserve their principles and their religion that were passed from one generation to the next. Another reason is a double reason. On one hand, the Haredi clothes distinguishes the people as Haredim, and it unites them all over the countries to one big crowd. 
You could recognize a Haredi in Israel, Switzerland, Thailand, or the USA, according to their Haredi garment. On the other hand, it differentiates them culturally from the rest of the population. Actually, each style of clothes associates the person with a group. It labels the proof's person and acts and requires him to act accordingly. Let me give you an example. How would you react if you would see a police officer break the law? From a police officer, you expect to be the model of law-keeping. Just as you expect a policeman that is uniformed to keep the law, and from a uniformed stewardess to be extra helpful, so the Haredi clothes are like a kind of uniform, which require their wearers to act accordingly. Haredim see themselves as active representative of their religion and belief. In the military uniform, one glance is enough to tell that the person is a soldier. Whoever is more experienced will be able to tell the core and the rank of the person by their badges and emblems. Also, the Haredi style can be recognized right away. Whoever is more skilled will be able to tell the community and even the degree of religious adherence of the wearer. At first, all hats look the same. Looking closer, you can see that there are high and low hats with wide and narrow brims made of, of different materials and designs. And each one of them has a meaning or a story behind it. The Hasidic frock, first moment looks all black. Taking a closer look, you will see that there are different patterns and different shades of color. Did you know that the Hasidic men in many communities wear on Friday night a black, solid, shiny coat, but on Saturday and daytime they wear a patterned one? Do you want to tell the difference between a single to the married? With the festive attire, you can do it. If you came across these big, round fur hats that are known as strimo, you couldn't miss it. These hats are worn in many Hasidic communities only by the married men on Saturday and on festives. Before the wedding, what does the groom buy his fiancé? Jewelry. What does she buy him as a gift? You got it, his first drama. In some communities, also the single men wear a strimo. How could you tell the difference in this case? Some communities, and special events, the married men will wear white socks, while the single will wear black ones. Hasidim consider their clothing to be a source of protection and of spiritual protection. Throughout the generations, many secrets were put into the garments, Kabbalistic secrets and spiritual meanings. The number of the threads, the length, the pattern, and even the color many times had a reason behind it. Let's take a simple issue like the buttons. On what side are your buttons and on what side are your buttonholes? Take a look. Did you ever think about it? Most of the community most of the population, which is right-handed, it's easier to hold the button on the right hand and put it through the buttonhole with the left hand. Why by woman is it different? In the past, a maid used to help her lady get dressed. In order to make it more convenient for her, the button side was changed. That's the origin of the difference between men and women's buttoning method. Let me surprise you that by the Hasidic men, their buttoning method is like that of a female. And why is that? In the Kabbalah, a lot of meaning and importance was put into the right and the left side. Generally, the right side represents kindness, while the left side represents strict justice. In order 
to show their desire to strengthen heavenly kindness over strict justice, they button right over left. There is a community of traditional Jews originally from Jerusalem known by the name Yerushalmi, which men, their men wear special striped coats. These coats have many secrets behind them. For example, from how many pieces of cloth do you think this coat is made? 26 pieces of cloth. Exactly 26, because 26 represents the numerical number of God's name in Hebrew. Even the direction of the stripes and the, the embroidery on it have meaning behind it. Women who want to make a living out of sewing these coats take a, co uh, take a special course to learn exactly how to do it. The Yerushalmis also have a special yarmulke that is white and knitted. This yarmulke can be bought ready-made, but many women prefer to sit and knit it on their own. Don't think it is easy. Knitting one yarmulke can take 10 hours, if not more. And you need to multiply that effort by the number of boys they have in the family. It could be also 10, if not more. So, why go to the bother? They see an opportunity to put holy intentions into the garment. While they sit and eat, knit the thread, together with the thread, they put prayers and meaning. And the white color resembles the cleanliness and purity. And the pom pom on the top represents their connection to the one above. Because there is so much meaning to the clothing, Hasidic men consider the garment to have sanctity and holiness in it. And therefore, they are very careful and avoid making changes in the garment. In the morning, when you open up the clothes closet and look for something to wear, or when you go shopping, how do you decide what to wear or what to buy? How did you decide what to wear today? We choose, to, we choose clothes to suit what we want to represent. The garment has a non-verbal language that sometimes is even more powerful than words. When I have sessions with tourists, I talk about it as part of what's called social tourism. There is a new trend in tourism. Tourists look for a personal experience. They want to meet the locals, visit their homes, and get to know their way of life. In Jerusalem, the tourist city office has a program called Nashim V'Sipurim B'Yerushalayim, Women and Stories in Jerusalem. These interesting women and artists present an opportunity for a personal encounter and a unique home hospitality. As a member of this group, I allow the tourists to have a close glimpse into my life. I show them the Haredi lifestyle and dress. People are impressed with the explanations that are accompanied by my authentic paintings, photographs, and video art. To some, the Haredim appeared as a primitive group. And after these sessions, they tell me they didn't imagine there is so much message, depth, and richness in their clothes. It was a pleasure to have such a session today here with you to open up together the Haredi clothes closet and see that not everything is black and white. So the next time you go on the street and you see a Haredi with his traditional dress, you will know that no, he is not part of an exhibit, but he does exhibit meaning, spirituality, and a long-standing tradition. Thank you. Thank you.